He was the best guy ever. He would help anybody. It's just terrible that this isn't justice. All we wanted was to seek the truth, and that's what we got. They're sending an innocent woman to prison for life. What about her kids? He was so loving and kind to her and gave his life for her. A convicted felon outsmarted the jury and everyone else. Yeah. What a shame. It's so hard to put into words. I'm excited. I'm relieved. A cold-blooded murderer. They believed him. I need to, you know, for him to go and shoot him again. Uh, you know, it just unsenseless. They, they, they sold out to the devil, and that's exactly what happened. And those jurors believed it. From swinging couples to a secret affair with religious undertones and poison pudding, the Sabrina Lamone trial has gripped our community and attracted national attention. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this special edition of Eyewitness News. I'm Rochelle Murcia. And I'm Dave Gonzalez. Today the jurors found Sabrina Lamone guilty of four felonies, including first degree murder of her husband Robert Lamone. Those felonies include conspiracy to commit her husband's murder with her then lover, Jonathan Hearn, soliciting murder and accessory after the fact. The jury found her not guilty of attempted murder and poisoning. We have been in the courtroom every day of this trial and bring you team coverage tonight. Eyewitness News reporter Kyle Harvey joins us in studio along with Hannah Baton to break down the case. Also, Kristen Powers is live with reaction from the family of Sabrina Lamone. But first, we begin with Raina Harvey, who spoke to the family of Robert Lamone. Raina? That's right, the family of Robert Lamone says they finally have justice here today, Dave. They said after three years of wanting to know who murdered their brother, well, they finally know the truth. And they said after wanting and waiting and praying and hoping, well, Sabrina Lamone will more than likely spend the majority of her life in prison. He was the best guy ever. He would help anybody. And he would, he would, it's, he was wonderful. He was loved by many, 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 and he's deeply missed. Robert Lamone's sister, Chris Wilson, is emotional as she speaks outside the courtroom moments after Sabrina Lamone is found guilty for the murder of her brother. I'm excited. I'm relieved. It's just been a long three years. The family teary-eyed when asked about the two children who will now grow up without parents. I love my niece and nephew. Um, I send out my love to him. We hope to see him. We hope to see them one day and tell them all the great stories we have of their father. Lydia Marrero, Robert's other sister, is still trying to understand why Sabrina killed her brother. He was so loving and kind to her and, and gave his life for her. And she was, I guess, seeking something else. I'm really not sure. The family says the hardest part of the trial was listening to testimony detailing Robert's murder. When Jonathan said that my brother was mortally wounded, it just broke our heart. And then, then he did, you know, for him to go and shoot him again, uh, you know, it just, and senseless. Wilson says her family is satisfied with the guilty verdict and finally have closure. It's time to put this behind us and and just move on. It'll never bring my brother back, but it'll bring justice. And that's that's what we've been looking for for three years. And that same closure that Robert's family spoke about, they said they also hope that the Sabrina Lamone's family will find the same closure. And Kristen Powers spoke to Sabrina Lamone's family today and has their emotional reaction. Kristen. Sabrina Lamone's family says a psychopath outsmarted the jury, saying now an innocent woman will spend more time behind bars than the man who pulled the trigger. This isn't justice. Sabrina did not do this. Sadness and anger coming from Sabrina Lamone's family after she was found guilty for her husband's murder. I believe that the jurors went on emotion and not facts. They say the only evidence against Sabrina was Jonathan Hearn's testimony, and they think he made it all up. A cold-blooded murderer. They believed him? 
uh, it's just absurd to me. Also strange to them is that the jury doubted Jonathan's story about the poison pudding, but still slammed Sabrina with a murder conviction. Of all the text messages and all of the phone calls, do they have any evidence that she was conspiring with him? Any? None whatsoever. As Robert Lamone's family celebrates, saying justice is served, all Sabrina's sister can think about are their children. And how anyone can be celebrating during this time is sickening to me because it's those kids, it's Robbie and Leanna, that are going to suffer for the rest of their life for this. Their dad was murdered, and now their mom may be in prison for the rest of her life. They're sending an innocent woman to prison. And Sabrina's family will be appealing this, saying the justice system has failed. We now turn things over to Hannah Bata. She's in studio and talks with an attorney who breaks down what may happen next. Hannah. Well, Kristen, everyone convicted of a crime has the right to an appeal as well as a right to a free attorney throughout that appeal. But local lawyers here tell me the chances of getting one in this case are slim. They tell me the appeal is not to challenge the judgment itself, whether someone's innocent or guilty, but rather to challenge the trial. Was the evidence presented fairly? Was the trial itself fair? Was there something left out that should have been included? Now, a local attorney tells me considering those questions, he still think the chances are a long shot for Sabrina Lamone. In every trial, there's no perfect trial. Uh, I think quite often trials are found to have some error. They have to rise to the level of harmful error and not harmless error. I would say somewhere in the route one in 60 chance, a case like this does get overturned for appeal, but that doesn't mean she goes free. Uh, if something is overturned in the appeal, it merely means she gets another trial. Raimondo also tells me while there was no smoking gun in terms of evidence for Sabrina Lamone, he tells me the environment that she conducted with regards to the murder, her behavior surrounding the murder, her demeanor, her tone throughout the trial is what ultimately worked in favor of the prosecution. He says while those behaviors in a court of law don't constitute murder, murder for a jury, it can. Reporting live in the Eyewitness News studio, Hannah Bata, Eyewitness News. David Rochelle, back to you guys. All right, Hannah, thanks for that. Bakersfield community, meanwhile, reacting to the news of Sabrina Lamont's trial. Eyewitness News reporter Lexi Wilson tells us how the community is feeling. Lexi. David and Rochelle, it's been a long journey, and our audience have been with us the entire way. The Sabrina Lamone trial has taken twists and turns over the course of three weeks. Now, locals who have watched it all play out the reaction to the verdict. Some feel sorry for Sabrina and for her children. Others say the jury got it right, that they convicted the woman who masterminded the crime. It's tragic overall, especially for the kids. However, uh, I didn't see remorse at the times I saw her and really didn't see emotion until the verdict was read. So uh, it's sad, but I think the jury uh, probably made the right decision. If you're going to do the crime, you're going to be able to have to do the time. She didn't actually pu pull the trigger. She wasn't the one who took, you know, the other person's life. So I think it's kind of harsh for her. And, you know, she has her kids to think about. Crime is equal. I don't think she should get more time than him, but I don't think she should get less. I mean, he was stupid enough to do it. If you have thoughts about the trial, head to our Facebook page, Bakersfield Now to leave a comment. Reporting live in studio, Lexi Wilson, Eyewitness News. Meanwhile, Jonathan Hearn's testimony was the key piece of evidence in this trial. He was the difference between Limon not being charged and being sent to prison for life. Sabrina Limon didn't have to take the stand in her own defense, but she chose to do so. Reporter Kyle Harvey joins us now with a look at back at some of each of these key players' key testimony. Kyle. Michelle, this really came down to whether the jury was going to believe what he said or what she said. So let's just go back through a short collection of what the jury heard from each of them. I enjoyed spending time with her, but then there was also the, the guilt of recognizing that I was doing something immoral. Well, they had an open relationship where he was pretty exploitative, or at least she expressed to me that he was pretty exploitative and um, objectifying her. We opened our marriage bed and it changed the dynamics of um, our sacred bond. Uh, she expressed a number of reasons why divorce was not a very appealing option for her and that was part of what solidified some of our conversations about uh, his actual 
eventual demise. I did not want our affair to be exposed. Why were you talking to Jonathan about the investigation? Um, he, in, in the very beginning, I mean, he wanted to know everything. He wanted to know everything that was going on, and I, I told him. I trusted him. I felt at the time like, um, in a way, that he was protecting, protecting us, protecting me. Um, I believed him. I was not in a good place. I was scared. I was nervous. Um, so my my conversations with Detective Meyer were. I've listened to him, and I don't understand some of them myself. And Kyle, you've been covering this thing for three weeks now, sitting in the courtroom. Today, as those verdicts are coming down, surprise or about what you thought? You know, I've thought a lot, of, a lot of things about this trial. I'm not sure if I'm ready to share all of them here. I know that I did do a, a poll on Twitter. I had a pretty large following on Twitter following the, the, the events. About 250 people voted, and almost all of them agreed that Sabrina was guilty of something. Yeah. I think there was significant disagreement among those that watched the trial about whether she was guilty of murder, but I don't think it was a terrible surprise to very many people in the room that she would be headed to prison for something yeah. today. What do you think may have influenced the outcome of this? Well, this was a circus. It really was. I mean, there was, um, there was a lot of media coverage, and it was a soap opera. I mean, this was, there was a lot of salacious information. There was, there was, some, there was embarrassing personal information shared extensively about almost every key witness in this trial. So I think there's, it's not unreasonable to, to think that, that the jury and really everyone's opinions about the testimony could have been swayed by the details they heard about everyone's personal life. I mean, it really was a soap opera. Right? That's the best way I have to, to explain it. And you, you mentioned the jury. That's one thing us viewers really didn't get a chance to see. We didn't see what any of these people. Tell us about that jury and, and why do you think they went as they did? You know, the, the, the jury had the opportunity to speak with the press, and all 12 of them denied it. I think as a reporter, that is the group of people that I probably would have most wanted to talk to today uh, after having watched them all. Um, and it's very difficult to get inside the mind of a jury. It was three men, nine women. Yeah. I, was, uh, I spoke with a, a separate, unrelated defense attorney today. He told me he thought he would have attempted to get more men on the jury. Um, again, it's impossible to say how they voted, but yeah. he would have wanted more men. Uh, the defense raised an issue uh, during their closing argument that he thinks that society is harder on uh, women that um, uh, sleep around, so to, so to speak, uh, than they are on men. Men are viewed sort of as you know, studs and heroes, and uh, women not so much. Uh, he thinks, the defense at least thinks that that may have played a role. Whether it did with these three men and nine women will never be, never be for sure. Yeah. Clearly, they, they chose the testimony of Jonathan Hearn um, over Sabrina LeMond's. That's all we can really say for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the past three weeks.